Now let's talk about theta notation, which is represented by theta. Now theta represents the average case complexity, the average case space and time complexity. O represents worst case, omega represents best case, and theta represents the average case. Now if you look at theta notation, if it's average case, then you have to show that, let's say this is our curve, like we have done previously. The x-axis represents the input and the y-axis represents the running time of the algorithm or the execution time. And let's say fn is the running time of any algorithm that we are talking about. So let's say fn is the running time of an algorithm. Now if you want to prove theta, if you want to show its theta notation, then you have to show that because it's average case, you have to show that this function fn is upper bounded as well as lower bounded by some function of n. So if you can show that this, if you want to show for theta, you have to prove that the function fn is big O as well as omega of gn. If you can show this, that is a function fn is upper bounded as well as lower bounded, then we say that it's the theta notation. Let's see how it works. So for that you have to show as well as O as well as omega. Now let's see the definition of theta notation. Now this is the definition of theta notation. That is if you can show that fn is less than equals to c into gn. If fn is less than equals to c2 into gn. So this is this corresponds to big O notation. And you also have to show that fn is greater than equals to c1 into gn. This corresponds to omega notation. So if you can show both O as well as omega then for all values of n greater than equals to n0 and for some positive content, constant c1 and c2. Remember this is gn and this is gn. They are the same function. All right. The difference is in, in, in this one you have c1, the constant c1 and this is the constant c2. So if c1 and c2 are positive constants, if this is true, if this particular inequality is true for all values of n greater than equals to n0, then you can claim that fn is theta of gn okay so let's see how it works so what we get what we, what we have to show is that fn is less than equals to c into gn that is fn is upper bounded by a curve so in this case fn should be upper bounded by a curve this one c2 into gn so in this case fn is upper bounded by c2 into gn this is big o notation if you have to show that fn is upper bounded by c2 into g1 this one this part and also we have to show that fn is lower bounded by c1 into gn so fn is lower bounded by c1 into gn something like this fn is lower bounded by c1 into gn so this part that is omega if we can show this for all values of n greater than or equals to n0 for all values of n greater than or equals to n0 if this is this we can show then we can say that fn is then you can say that fn is theta of gn so this is the definition of theta notation now let's look at some of the examples of theta notation let's take this example in this example we have to prove that 10 log n base 2 plus 4 is theta of log n base 2 in this example, fn is nothing but, this is fn, 10 log n base 2 plus 4 and gn is log n base 2. So if I have to prove for, I have to prove this for theta. So by the definition of theta, of theta, I can write, I have to show that fn is less than equals to c2 into g1 and greater than equals to c1 into gn. So first let's prove for O, that is this one. Let's prove Let's try to show that fn is, that is fn is less than equals to c2 into gn. So let's take what is fn. fn is nothing but 10 log n base 2 plus 4. Now to show that this is less than equals to uh, some constant multiple of c into log n. Okay, that is c2 into gn. Here gn is log n base 2. Now I can write 10 log n base 2 plus 4 is less than equals to 10 log n base 2 plus we already discussed this in bigo that if this is a lower order term if i can upgrade this to higher order term here in rhs it becomes log n base 2 so this becomes less than equals to 11 
log n base 2. So I can always write 10 log n base 2 is plus 4 is less than 11 here because 10 log n base 2 and 10 log n base 2 they are same and here we have added 4 and we have it added 10 uh, we, here we have added log n base 2 so it's a function of n so if it's a function of n this right hand side would always be more than the left hand side but we have to see for what value of so in this case the value of c2 becomes 11 now we have to find out the value of n0 so how do I find out the value of n0 is very simple I can solve this inequality if I, if I solve this inequality uh, this becomes less than equals to 4 and this 10 log n base 2 goes that side so it becomes 11 log n base 2 minus 10 log n base 2 placing the like terms together so now it becomes 4 is less than equals to 10 11 minus 10 is log or uh, just 1 so 1 log n base 2 so by the property of log I can say that here n should be greater than equals to this is 4 so it should be 16 greater than equals to 16 this is the, by the property of log I can write this n should be greater than equals to 16 that is the value of n should always be more than equals to 16 so here the minimum value of n should be what 16 so here here this is true for all values of n greater than equals to 16 that is n naught is 16 and c2 is 11 c2 is 11 so this is how i prove for so uh, this is how i prove for this part now let's try to prove for the this one that is let's prove that fn is greater than or equals to c1 into gn so what is fn fn is this one let's take that first so that is 10 log n base 2 plus 4 can I write that this is always greater than or equals to uh, let's say log n base 2 simple enough this is 10 times log n and this is simply log n so obviously in this case LHS should be more than RHS because it is 10 times log n here moreover we are adding 4 also so this is true here so let's say here c is how much is c1 c1 is 1 and what's the value of n0 so this is is this true for all the values of n yes this is true for all the values of n greater than 0 yes so this is true for all the values of n greater than 0 because n0 cannot be 0 I've already discussed so the minimum value of n should be 1 so let's say here n0 is 1 so now we have shown that this is true and this is true that means now we have shown this that is fn what is fn fn is 10 log n base 2 plus 4 is less than equals to it's less than equals to this one that is 11 log n base 2 and it's greater than equals to uh, log n base 2 1 log n base 2 this is true here the value of c1 is 1 the value of c here is 1 and the value of c2 is 11 c2 is 11 so this is true now we have to find out the value of n0 so in this case what's the value of n0 what is n0 now this one is true for all values of n greater than equals to 16 and this one is true for all values of n greater than greater than 0 that means greater than equals to 1 but if I'm writing it here it should be true for both of these, right so if it should be if it should be true for both of these, it's always good to take the you always have to take the larger value so this is always true for all values of n greater than equals to 16 so here n naught becomes 16 so in this case n naught becomes 16 so we have shown that if we are if you are being able to show this then by the definition we can write by the definition we can write fn that is 10 log n base 2 plus 4 is theta of log n base 2 so this is how you can prove this okay so here if you write this here it looks like this instead of c2 gn you can write fn is nothing but 10 log n base 2 plus 4 this is upper bounded by 11 log n base 2 and lower bounded by log n base 2 so if i can show this so by the definition 
this is true for all values of n greater than or equals to so this is 16 n naught is 16 here so i can say that by the definition that is fn that is 10 log n base 2 plus 4 is theta of log n base 2 this is how you can work with theta notation now in my next video i'll i'll be talking about more examples and more good examples on how to work with all these three notation that is big O, omega as well as theta notation. So till then stay tuned.